Oh, here's a here's a good example of one that needs fillets. I think this is I'm not sure if this is an English model or not. Um, I think this is a, I think this is an English model. So let's <coughs> go in here tools. Because if you switch from an English model into a metric one, and you're still um, in inches, when you go to put something in, it's either going to tell you you can't create it, or it's going to be huge. So like this one here, this one has not been uh, assembled together. So if I go up here and I say define work object, and what I'm going to do is I'll pick all these bodies. And come down here and say assemble. Now here's here's the perfect example of one too that uh, you want to do the, the primaries first. So on the back edge, I know there's a fillet that runs up here. It runs down this edge. So my natural selection for that would be this edge right here. And um, let's see, 0.197. How big is that? No, that's, that's probably not the right size. I think these are probably up. So I do that one, come back, I do this one, and then my third one, is right here on this edge, and that makes my transition. And when I told you it'll definitely let you make them incorrectly, um, here's a real good example of that. If you don't pick these in the correct sequence, it'll, it'll build at the point of fillets. Um, this one here on the front, um, I know that I'm going to turn down. This is going to come along this edge. It's going to turn down, and it's going to go straight down this edge. So what I'm going to do first is I will put one on this edge like that. And if you look, it wrapped around that part. And then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to pick this edge. And if you, if you, you can see the red here, it's going to come up, come around, and come down. So there's that fill. Now these ones are a little more tricky. You have to use the same kind of methodology that I did up here. I know that I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn here, come down, turn here. So the way I would do these is I would pick this one, this one, and this one's separate over here, so I'm going to glue it to. Okay, so I've got those done. And then when I come back to do this one, Now I need one, I need one right here. So, no, that's not what I want. Let me back out of this one. I want to do, let's see what happens when I do it like this. I want this one, this one, this one. And I'll see what happens when I put one in. That's what I want. Because remember, I'm building the primaries. So here's a here's a, a perfect example of one that's pointed that goes out onto a tangent surface. Now when I come back and I do this one at the end, I pick this edge, everything transitions together. And it's going to be by the shape of the model. Um, and this one's, you know, 90 degrees to what we just built. So I can't always say do the verticals and the horizontals. It's, it's based on the features on the part. Um, I do want to go back and show you, I had a couple, had a couple questions um, sent to me via email related to the whole command, okay? And, um, because obviously as you do more solid models, you're gonna to have to put holes in them. And um, like this part right here, as you can see right now, if I collapse this tree,
there's all my edge fillet. So now is the perfect time to go in and put some holes in it. Um, one of the questions that I had was, well, can I use um, can I use regular pads and pockets to subtract them? Sure, a solid model is a solid model. I want to show you how to use the hole command though. A little bit easier to edit. Um, one thing that I would say about the hole command is um, it's it's very easy to edit, but it's uh, it's sketch driven. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is you got to be up and you got to be in this part line to find a work object. And um, with this one, I'm just going to go into the hole command. And it says select a face or a plane. Optionally, select a point or a line first to position the sketch. Okay. I'm going to pick this plane. And if you notice, where I picked it, it's ready to go. It's going to build this, it's going to build this hole. This is a blind hole. It under, and if you look at it, it's, it's got a tapered base on it. I'm going to say up to last, okay? When you do that, it takes it all the way through the through this part, okay? So it looks at the last face. Um, then I'm going to say, okay, I want to position this, all right? You can go through the command um, if you... If you like where it is, you can basically say, okay, that's what I want. Um, I've gone into the sketch to position it. I'm gonna position from this edge to here. And let's, let's. Okay, so you can see that moves. And now I'm gonna position it vertically. And you don't need to, uh, you don't need to pick an edge. You can pick you can pick an actual face in the 3D model. So this one I'll go from here to this point. And then I'm just going to exit the sketch and say okay. Now, when I said you should probably position it while you're there, you don't need to. You can go up, like if I wanted to do a hole through this, and I pick that, and I just, now if you look, it's it's concentric already. It's probably not a good, uh, probably not a good candidate because it looks at the surrounding geometry. If I wanted to put a hole in here though, and I said, okay. If I want to go back and position that now, all I need to do is if I go to this sketch, first of all, you got to find out which one it is. So it's hole, it's this hole, double click the sketch, it takes you into that view. So you could place holes all over the part and come back and position them. Um, if I wanted to make it coincident with this, with this plane, so remember I said in 3D, you won't have any problems with that. So if I pick this point, then I come back and I pick this plane right here, and then I right mouse click and I say coincident, it moved, it moved up to that plane and then if I want to go um, a dimension, <coughs> I went from that plane to this, this thing says 2.059. I'm going to exit the sketch. So like I said, you can place holes wherever you want and then come back and clean them up. One of the other things too is when you go to put a hole in, notice, I go to put this in, I've got all kinds of different um, options in this first menu. So see where it says extension? If I go in here and I say, okay, it's a blind hole, the, first, the next thing it says is, what kind, well, what's the type? Well, it can either be a simple, if you look, it shows you kind of in this graphic what it is. I can do a tapered hole. I can do a counterboard hole. And look at underneath the counterboard. It asks you, it says, well, okay, what's the diameter of the counterboard and the depth? So it's asking you in here what that is. I can do a countersunk hole. Same thing, depth and angle. And if you look at this one, you can say, depth and diameter because a lot of times on a drawing it'll tell you it'll say this is the this is the depth 
and here's the diameter of this, where it doesn't give you the actual angles. Uh, angle and diameter, this is just exactly the opposite. If I come up here, I can do a counter drill, okay? So you can see, no counter sunk diameter. I can add one. So it shows you exactly what each one of these are. Now, when you're doing a, um, a hole, go back to this model. If you're doing a hole on um, a curved surface like this, the first thing it wants is, it says, I want a line or a point. Well, we don't really have a point here anywhere. But because um, I constructed this and I'm, I'm right on the x, y, z, one thing you can do, so if you go to place a hole, select the face or a plane, optionally select the point or line in the first position to sketch. If I go over here to pick this, it'll let me pick something, okay? But it's not going to be lined up with anything. If you look at it, it makes it normal to the surface. Now, even if I had a point here, because I picked that face, it would probably still try and make it uh, normal to that surface. But because I do have a line right there, the y, the y coordinate, what I can do is go in here and pick this, pick the y, and um, pick this. And if you notice, you can basically take this down a, you can take this down a line or a sketch. So there's a, there's a few different ways to do this. And with this one as well, let's see if I have, so all these planes are turned off. This is another reason why if you model somewhere out in the middle of this part, the other thing you can do is if you need to pick, you need to put a hole in something, pick that plane, I can go down here and say reverse. And right now it's scheduled for, it says up to last. If I say okay, now I'm going all the way into the middle of that part. And this part actually has um, the hole on the side meets the hole through here. So if I place another hole in here, and let's say I make it 25. See that one went all the way through. If I go back here and I say, so yeah, this part um, actually has a hole that goes through the center, and then there's an intersecting hole. And on the, there's a hole that goes through this. And this has a hole that intersects it, and then this top one has a hole that intersects it. So they're all three different planes, but they all come through each other. So it's got these like interconnecting channels in, inside. Okay, um, questions on hole for uh, tree construction? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna send out the homework assignments. Like I said, the first one is. Uh, Sketch or practice for offsets, fillets, and then the second one is um, a solid model. And it is metric, it's marked. Um, you can either do it with traditional Booleans. Um, it does need fillets, and it does need holes. Um, so I'll send it out here briefly. I've already got it loaded, I just need to send it.